10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V, carrying two American heroes, drawing a line to the stars for all of us. That is the sight and the sound of success at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Boeing, NASA, and United Launch Alliance successfully launched their Starship spacecraft with two astronauts on board. It's the program's first mission with a human crew. In 2014, NASA gave contracts to both SpaceX and Boeing to provide a new spacecraft capable of ferrying astronauts to the International Space Station. SpaceX has successfully begun launching astronauts to the ISS in 2020, while Boeing's program has faced a few setbacks and cost overruns along along the way. But what does it matter? Because today is the good news day. So let's turn to our friend Chris Hatfield. He's a retired astronaut, military aviator. He's also the author of a book, a new book that's out, his latest novel, The Defector. Chris, so good to have you. Thank you so much for making time for us today. Thanks, Natasha. I agree with you. Uh, all that other stuff is water under the bridge. Uh, it's really hard to launch a spaceship safely with people on board, and I just feel superb that Sonny and Butch are now in orbit on their way up to the space station on a brand new rocket and a brand new spaceship. It's, it's a really important day in the history of space exploration. Let's talk about that moment, because even though that stuff is under the bridge now, you know, there was skepticism. I would put myself in that group of people who was like, is this really going to happen? And it hasn't happened. It didn't happen on Saturday. But then it did. And that moment, no matter how many times you witness it, it still gives you butterflies. We're leaving the surface of our planet and going into outer space. And you know the two guys on that, that aircraft. Like, talk to us about what that moment was like for you. Yeah, the easiest job in the world is to be a skeptic, because yeah. then you don't have to do anything, you don't have to take any risks. But what Butch and Sonny did today, uh, they are both, like I was, they were both test pilots in the United States Navy. Um, Sonny, she was a helicopter test pilot. Butch was an F-18 test pilot with me. Um, they are now flying this spaceship for the very first time. And, and you know, it's been, uh, gosh, 61 years since an Atlas rocket carried people up to space, since Gord Cooper, Gordo Cooper flew to space. And, and but now, they are in the process of proving uh, one more way for human beings to safely get to Earth orbit and back. And initially, they'll go to the space station, but uh, that just opens up another ship as, as we start to develop Earth and Earth orbit and lunar commerce. So it's a big moment, but it's also a huge personal moment. They've been working on this for years and years. They have not just been training, but they've been inventing a new type of space flight, digging out all of the stuff that can fail on a rocket and spaceship like this. What astronauts do for a living is not like practice things going right. We try and constantly figure out what can go wrong and then how are we going to keep it from going wrong or react to it as it happens. That's what we do for a living. That's what uh, Sonny and Butch did today. And it's great to see them now having lifted their orbit uh, so that they're safely going around the world in a circle. And within about a day or so, everything works okay. They'll dock with the space station. So between now and getting to the space station, what would they be doing on board? The first time this spaceship's ever flown, you know, it's called Starliner. They got all sorts of checkouts to do. Imagine if this was the very first flight of an airplane with a test pilot on board. You've got this whole envelope of speed and altitude and forces, and you're just sort of right in the middle of it. You've got to define everything this spaceship can actually do. So they have a bunch of automatic tests, a whole bunch of manual tests where Sonny and Butch, well, they'll do a bunch of hand flying. You don't want to have any questions that you can answer prior to getting close to the huge space station with the people on board there. So they're going to do a whole bunch of testing. They'll get some sleep. They'll have a bite to eat. They'll get themselves ready for the next big threshold of this flight, which is the delicate sort of like two elephant kind of ballet of flying in closely to then dock with the station and stay there for about a week. Um, so a lot of stuff still to go, but the most danger per second part is over with uh, now that they've made it through launch. And you mentioned this delicate ballet that has to take place in outer space of coming 
the right degree to the International Space Station, locking it at exactly the right angle so that they can safely do the work that they need to do on board the ISS. Talk to us about how that gets maneuvered, how that communication uh, happens. Yeah, well, what's cool is the next time this vehicle flies, it's going to have a Canadian on board, uh, Josh Kutrick. He's actually in mission control right now, talking to the crew. He's from, uh, I think, Fort Saskatchewan in Alberta. Anyway, um, and so uh, Sonny and Butch have to prove all those systems. Just think, how would you dock with a space station? Like, how do you know where it is when it's still over the horizon? How do you know how to maneuver when you're already going eight kilometers a second. It's a really complex flying task and you have to get perfectly maneuvered next to it and then touch it just the right speed, not too soft so you bounce off, not too hard so you break systems. They got to fly all that stuff and make it all work. And if things start to go wonky, they've got to be able to do an emergency abort and get away without hurting the space station and its crew. So, you know, Tracy and, and Jeanette and folks are up there on the space station. They'll, they'll be really looking for new company, but it's a super technical task that Sonny and Butch are doing, and they're just opening the door permanently for Canadians like Josh Kutrick and Jenny Seide and, and some of the other Canadian astronauts to have a chance to fly this vehicle in the future. Okay, Chris, so much more I want to talk to you about. Well, we have to save it for another day. Thanks so much for making time for us today. Uh, nice to talk with you, and I'll looking forward to that docking tomorrow. Okay, you got it. Chris Hatfield, thank you.